Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. It's Paul Turner here from the discipleproject.net with another Wednesday at one. I hope everybody's doing well. I've got my coffee here and I'm going to settle in for the next 20 minutes or so to bring you guys some good youth ministry information. So if you're a youth pastor, a volunteer, bivocational, um, you know, volunteer, whichever it may be, um, I'm here to help you and answer some questions. So if you have questions about youth ministry in general, or you have something very specific you want to talk about, uh, please go ahead and leave me some questions in the comments area. It's probably over here, down there, or the chat, wherever that may be. And um, for me today, we're going to talk about uh, my friend Joe Maldonado uh, down in, uh, in Vero Beach, Florida. Uh, something I picked up from his, uh, his youth ministry, he's got a little 24-7 manual. And, and by manual, I, I mean like maybe 10 pages at most. Let me see what we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, not even that. Eight. Ten if you count the cover, I guess. Uh, but uh, we're going to go through a little bit of that because I know everybody uh, thinks about, well, you should think about, maybe you should say it that way. Uh, you should think about having uh, a something that your volunteers can refer to when uh, you as a youth pastor want to introduce, um, you know, policies, practices, guidelines. Uh, hopefully you want to introduce those thoughts to your volunteers because when you get a volunteer and you do a training, which by the way, I recommend it highly. If this is, you know, getting into fall season, hopefully you're going to have uh, some kind of uh, training day, right? This here is a uh, team manual and this is what they do for their uh, they have a schedule. I love what they have at the beginning here. They hand this out and they have a little schedule right in there. And it's just a schedule. It's a Friday evening and a Saturday morning via Skype, which I think that's kind of cool. Now, now, listen, you could do it, uh, you know, uh, in person. You can have like a little Friday night, Saturday morning. Or like them, which I kind of like the idea. It's like, hey, listen, just get on Skype Saturday morning. You don't have to come out. Uh, but we'll just do it video, uh, do a video training on some of the information there. Um, and they have on Friday night, they have four sessions. Uh, they talk about the big three, the six essentials, um, Wednesday nights, what that looks like and discipleship, um, about what that looks like within their program. So I think those are all very good things, uh, that we need to look at and take a look at your youth ministry and, Begin to look at what are the vital things that you want your volunteers to know, right? Especially if they're brand specking new. Don't, you have to write it, right, as if not only the people you have may not know some things, but write it for, like, the, the new person that's coming in that these are the essentials. Now, I like, uh, too, the fact that, um, you know, I just got back from Virginia Beach <clears throat> at a coaching session there and uh, at Essential Church. And they have one called Essential, they have a, the, their youth program is called Essential Youth, which I think is great because then you can decide, right, and for, for Essential, for uh, uh, Ryan and uh, Ethan, if you guys ever watch this, <clears throat> you talk about what are the essentials, right, of youth ministry. What are the essentials of these things? And, um, and so the way they do their training, so I think training and the manual should go hand in hand, but you're going to have the manual on hand no matter what. Uh, the question is, can you, uh, you know, uh, there's different thoughts on this, but can a volunteer join your team midstream? In other words, does everybody have to show up for that? It's a good question. Um, or does everybody have to make the, uh, the, the, the one day that you're going to do that training and says, okay, look, you're committed from September to uh, May, let's say. And I think that's a very good time span. I think that's clear that you have to make that clear in your manual, things like that. This is a nine-month commitment. This is a full school year that whatever you're committing to, whether you're a small group leader, whether you're a uh, uh, an activity coordinator, whether you're a, um, uh, you know, security, which, by the way, that's listed in here, too, uh, that security, uh, especially in the day and time that which we live, having somebody that's security is a very good idea that in case of an emergency, in case of whatever may happen, right? Uh, whether that's a, an incident, uh, whether that's a some kid, uh, kids decide they're going to get into a fight, 
um, you know, whatever that is, you, you know, that you guys are going to have in your thing there, what to do in case of an emergency. Because I think that's just super important that we have to go over that with, with folks here. But um, some of the other things, like I said, in this particular one that they offer, uh, that they do with their group, they have, like I said, a a, uh, uh, you know, they go into various things. They talk about the big three, which is God, family, church. Uh, then they go into the, uh, the six essentials. And I think you have to create that for your youth ministry. Once again, and say, what are, what is essential? Now I'm, I may do a separate video on this. Um, and I, you know, I'll just tell you the essentials right now. They talk about be our guest. Uh, they talk about act as if, uh, getting into character, which talks about how to prepare and get ready for a Wednesday night. Uh, act your part. Uh, set the stage. And then number six, live up to the hype. I like all of those. And I may do that in an entirely separate video uh, to really kind of bear down on some of those. I think they're great. Also in there, uh, they have a game plan. In other words, they're saying in here, here's what this is going to look like. It's going to be pre-game, right? What happens before the service? Spectator right? Um, you know, what, what can they do? Uh, well, I should, I, I'm, I'm interpreting as I go, cause I did not ask specifics on this, but pregame, uh, spectator, season ticket holder, uh, and player. So they broke this down into, um, you know, the various categories of, a, of an actual like football game, I imagine. Uh, and they talk about the different ways you can serve, uh, in those areas. Pregame is things like, School visits, campus ministry, sporting events, feedings, random acts of kindness, all these things. How can you participate? Well, pregame, you can do this. If you just want to be a spectator, right? Maybe you're just saying, look, I, I want to help in the ministry. And this is critical, I think, in your, um, in your process. Uh, everybody doesn't need to know everything, right? Uh, but, but for this, you're, this is a, I would assume, not having been to the training myself, that, um, that this is a, a, interest level uh, team manual maybe that you're showing up. You say, I want to participate in the youth ministry, but I don't know exactly where to start. And so I think having the manual available and the training available uh, together is obviously uh, critical, but also having uh, a manual ready uh, for um, possibly some of you might have to replace my baby maybe. But I, I like the idea of having uh, and you guys tell me, if you do, tell me about your, your training. First of all, I would love to know, do you have a manual that you actually, and by manual, I don't mean like a hundred pages of, you know, information that they don't need to know. Joe's here is, like I said, eight pages, 10 if you include the cover, um, front and back. Uh, and then they do everything within uh, the manual here to kind of help people find their way. It's not... A book. It's not a, a manual in the sense of like how you fix your, you know, <laughs> your V8 uh, uh, engine in your Corolla. That that kind of manual that has every detail about what every little piece and part. It doesn't go into great detail. It is a massive overview that you cover details. I would imagine at your training. But I would like to know in the comments. Do you have a manual? Do you require your volunteers to serve nine months? It's a September through May. And I, I can't encourage that enough, guys. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I wish I had done that um, in regards to many of the youth ministries because what that did was is it gave a starting point and a stopping point for volunteers. <clears throat> I say, Pope Paul, what do you do during the summer? Well, if you watch the video, and I'll put a link up here with that video uh, that I did with Joe about his room, uh, his summer uh, is basically uh, events. There are events and or activities, and there is no regular meeting during the summer. Now, this is down in South Florida, where it is uh, possibly, and having worked down there, I understand, tough to get people to come to the program. Uh, the weather is beautiful. You're off traveling. There's vacations. There's all these things. So everything was event driven. That you, look, if you show up to the event, you show up to the event. If you don't show up to the event, you you know you don't show up to the event. But it was all event driven where you did not need a massive amount of volunteers to make something happen. Um, and I don't know if that included camp or not, but, uh, but a lot of activities, whether that was going to a ball game, or like going to see the Marlins, uh, you know, going to 
um, you know, uh, Disney World or something like that. Um, but uh, but what they did is they did they just did it where they did not need a massive amount of volunteers to make summer happen. And you can say either way. I, I think it works both ways. I don't think it necessarily um, one is necessarily better than the other. It all matters on church culture. It matters in the demographics you're in. It matters uh, a lot of those things. But I bet you having the summer off has a lot of uh, uh, has a lot of benefits to that because all your <coughs> volunteers come in fresh. So I would like to know. Like I said, do you have a uh, do you have a, a manual for your team? Do you uh, how do you work your summers, right? Do you, excuse me. Do you have a uh, a commitment, a time commitment that everybody must serve, and do you, um, you know, uh, do you take summers off? Maybe like Joe did. I like to know some of those things. So please leave me your your information there. Um, some of the other things that they do in here, they have Wednesday night. They have a little notes page, which I like. So Joe, I imagine, does the teaching on these subjects both on f maybe Friday, uh, Friday night. Um, yeah, Friday night, and he does the notes there so everybody can take notes. Uh, it's a simple little thing. Uh, then they have the pre-game plan, like I said. Where do you want to fit in? If you're pre-game, there's things you can do where you don't even need to show up to the meeting, right? You, you can, uh, but the pre-game is school visits, random acts of kindness, feedings, uh, run Instagram, all that kind of stuff. If you're a spectator, uh, you get into things like the cafe. You're not necessarily hands-on with students, but you do things like cafe or live music. Um, you help with big events. Uh, you work with birthday cards and send out birthday wishes, uh, JV or varsity events. Um, you know, all those kind of things. Um, so you can have also season ticket holders. And Season ticket holders in this as I is really part of the small groups. It's you're doing JV Bible study six through eight, or you're doing varsity Bible study nine through twelve. So that happens on their Wednesday night, if I remember correctly. And then if you're a player, right? If you're a season ticket holder, you're you're committed to doing just the small group ministry. But if you're a player, you're committing to something else. You're you're in for the you're you're like knee deep in the mud of the game, so to speak, right? So you got fall retreat, you have the mission trip, spring mission trip, you have uh, big day of serving, um, you know, uh, the varsity Bible reading plan, those kind of things. There's just a bunch of really how he segments it of what your participation level is. Um, let's see, they also have uh, a top ten here of the. Um, Things that are what would, would be uh, policy, right? Good policies uh, that deal with appropriate behavior, um, uh, you know, sexual, uh, verbal, nonverbal behavior things that are inappropriate. Um, you know, all those kind of things are in there, and they are uh, very, very good. Then they have a little uh, topic there on altar counseling. That if you're going to counsel somebody at the altar, here are some things for that. Uh, and then in the back, it's got some notes, but that's basically the uh, that's basically the uh, the manual. And I, I may go deeper into another video with that, but I just I, I just wanted to come to you guys and talk about uh, the importance of having a manual, having a a guidebook for people, and what should go in that. Feel free to leave me some comments, by the way, on what you what what you what's maybe in your book in your uh, manual that you give volunteer leaders. Uh, and maybe some things maybe you need to have in there, right? It's We're just getting into it, guys. It's maybe School here has just started. Maybe school hasn't started for you. Uh, but uh, you can still put together a manual. You still put together a, um, a, uh, a, a something there and a training day to get your volunteers on the same page where you're not having to deal with chaos, right? You're not having to deal because everybody's like, you know, everybody's not kind of doing their own thing. It, there's a manual that says, hey, this is our... our um, standards of practices and our policies concerning such and such. Uh, and I just think that's, uh, it doesn't take a lot to do that. So, um, well, that's it guys. I thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for a little while. And if, like I said, if you have questions, leave some comments down below as well as, uh, don't forget if you're brand spanking new, you've never seen this before. Uh, I want to thank you for visiting for just a little bit and, um, feel free to subscribe. Uh, go ahead and click on here. My head will come, be coming up somewhere shortly. And click uh, the subscribe button as well as click the little bell down there. You'll be notified when I upload a video or when I go live. And then you'll be able to uh, hang out with me Wednesdays at 1. 
And then uh, if you're a regular, as always, I appreciate you guys so much. We're, uh, we're just heading in the right direction on this channel. And um, all you guys participating and offering your, um, your ideas and your thoughts. I'm always interested in what you would like to hear next. So you can leave comments for that as well. And um, that's going to be it for today, guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out for a little while with me. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.